If you clicked into this video, it's possible that you or someone you care about is processing a breakup. And there's, I think, a misconception and a common feeling when you're in that breakup that it's just this free fall through the unknown. A very nebulous time with no structure, filled with you just coming up with creative ways to torture yourself. Just a painful free fall through a vacuum. But the good news is there actually is a structure to breakups. There are predictable plot points, timelines, and cycles. Which I know because I've been through a lot of breakups. I've, I've spent a lot of time in breakups. I'm not great at being in relationships. Not great at that. Haven't figured that out yet but breakups I kind of feel like I got my PhD and recently I've watched a lot of people I love go through the very specific torture that is a breakup and if you're in that place now or you care about somebody that you want to be able to support who's in that place now this video is for you luckily I went through chronic breakups so you don't have to here's what I learned <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna talk about the timeline of a breakup, some plot points to expect, revelations I had that changed everything, some tools that helped me survive the breakup. We're gonna talk about contact versus no contact. Spoiler, the answer is no contact. Books and materials that helped me through. And there's gonna be lots of insights about how to support somebody else while they're going through their breakup. There's good support and there's not so great support. Importantly, I'm going to reference some of my breakup experience a little bit of my relationship experience. This is not a place to be attacking people. It's not a place to vilify. Please don't be doing that in the comments. That doesn't feel like support to me to attack my exes or anyone else's. That's not what support feels like to me. That's not what I want this place to be. I'm just gonna talk about some of the learnings. We're all people. We've all messed up. I certainly have. Moving forward. This topic can get heavy and we're all probably already depressed, so I'm, I'm trying to think of some ways to lighten it up. So I'm just gonna Google image, stock images of breakups and throw them in here. I think that'll be fun for us. <laughs> I feel like this one is the most break accurate breakup image. Two people sitting in a public spot that should be cheery sharing a so Sunday, but they're super depressed. One time someone broke up with me in a Dave and Buster's on Valentine's Day. When you're in this place, it feels like things will never change, right? They'll never get better. In any time of loss or grief, it's just this overwhelming feeling of this is forever. Even if intellectually you know better, it's very hard to feel your way out of that. Just know things do change even if you didn't want them to. Even the good things can't stay forever. Nothing stays. And so one of the most helpful things for me was realizing that there is very much a timeline to breakups. There are steps that you are going through. There are stages and there's a cycle. And the timeline and the duration of each of those steps will vary based on a couple different factors. I found that the timeline for healing is not affected by who broke up with who. You can be in total torture either way, and people often are. Not affected by that. Also, not affected necessarily by the length of the relationship. A short relationship can devastate you. Don't let anyone undermine your pain or minimize your pain because like it was a shorter relationship. Because the thing that I found affects the healing timeline and the intensity of the pain the most is the strength of the attachment, whether it's the attachment to the person or the attachment to the relationship and an attachment to the idea of what it meant for you. You can be quite attached to someone that you were never even committed to or more dangerously attached to an idea of them, an idea of what being with them meant. So above all, remember that the amount that you miss them is not indicative of how right the relationship was or how much you were supposed to be with them. It is only indicative of the strength of your attachment to them. The main thing I learned through going through chronic breakups, a lot of them with one person, is that there is a cycle. And the cycle is usually this. No matter who broke up with who, immediately after the breakup, right, there's so much emotion, there's so much buildup, there's a reason you're breaking up. So immediately after the breakup, there's usually like a state of shock, maybe even a state of feeling a little high, where you're kind of indignant or 
them. You know, you're still wrapped up in whatever made you break up in that moment. Then after a period of a few days, typically, the fear and the doubt starts to settle in. You start to miss them, you start to feel the gaps left by them in your life, and you start to fear the unknown. And this like sudden like collapsed negative feeling, the extreme of that, I felt usually lasts for a week or two or so. And if you can push through that, you kind of get to the next level. And there's a new level of stability. You're not happy, you're not having a good time, you're probably still depressed, but it's a little different than that first intense week or two. And then some point after that, you will reach a new low, <laughs> bear with me, where you're like, oh my God, I feel terrible all over again. I thought I was stabilizing a little bit and now things are worse again. And that cycle continues to happen. And it's easy to feel like it's just repeating and you're not making progress, but that cycle is the progress. You're not repeating the healing from before. Like each time you're getting upgraded to processing a further level of that healing. It's like you're swimming from an island across an ocean to the mainland. And in between there are all these little sandbars where you can like rest for a moment and like maybe breathe a little bit and like stand for a moment and then you have to keep swimming and you keep hitting those sandbars and in between the sandbars you probably feel like you're drowning a little bit it's work it's exhausting it's killing you it kind of feels like the swim you did before but you're actually getting closer to the mainland and if you stop and decide to go back like you're just putting yourself back on the island and you still have to do that swim so even though it's repetitive it is progress you are getting closer and closer and closer and farther away from the original island of hell. So if you've been feeling okay and then you find yourself suddenly freaking out and missing them and devastated, it, it doesn't mean that the thing was meant to be. And it doesn't mean that you're not progressing. Don't freak out. You're literally leveling up. Before you could only process not having them around for a month. Now you're processing not having them around for four months. It's a different thing. You've leveled up. It doesn't mean this feeling is forever and it doesn't even mean you've backslid. So don't let the cyclical nature of it throw you off. It is actually still progress. Otherwise, I think it's easy to take those drowning moments of like, oh my God, I've backslid. I'm never gonna get over them. This is the true feeling that the relationship was right and I should go back. Uh -uh. Nah, -huh. uh, uh. I'll throw this in there. I was very comforted by the knowledge that if you're like a self-development growth junkie, like I kind of am, nothing will make you spiritually hotter. Nothing will make you spiritually sexier. Nothing will feed your soul more than going through a time of torture. Massive loss, massive pain, having your soul ripped apart. Nothing makes you spiritually hotter. These are the times of growth. When everything is going well, you do not grow. It's nice, it's nice to be happy and for things to be growing well, but there's no friction there that forces you to like look at yourself and look at what matters to you and figure out the hard moments of life. There's no growth in the happy times. Sorry to break it to you. But when you're at the end of your rope, and it feels like nothing is worth it, every moment of pain, it's like, oh, this is constructive. The deeper the pain, the deeper the transformation. Bitch, you're becoming a butterfly. It's just true. It's the only way. Speaking of getting broken up with, this is a sweatshirt I bought myself after I got dumped recently. I don't know if I call it a breakup. To me, breakup seems like it's like a relationship. This wasn't a relationship, but it did pummel me to the ground, I'll tell you that. And I bought myself this sweatshirt because I thought it was a funny sweatshirt, debating wearing it on future dates. I did put it on like my Hinge dating profile for a while, but it caused some confusion because people were like, so did your your ex-husband, this is from your past marriage? Or, uh, it made things complicated. So like most things I do, I, I do it because I think it's funny and then it um, makes things worse. But something that won't make your life worse is using a daily multivitamin. Big supporter of this channel. Was that a cool segue? Biggest supporter of this channel from day one is Ritual. I talk about Ritual all the time. They make this whole YouTube channel possible. I love Ritual. First of all, it's a great product, yes, but doing YouTube integrations, I get to like see what brands are like behind the scenes and Ritual is like my favorite. They're the most lovely people to work with and that means a lot to me because anybody can just like come out with a product. But being like, being decent people is really nice too. I love Ritual, I use them for my daily multivitamin. I've talked about that before. This is their Symbiotic, which is a newer product they've come out with. It combines a prebiotic, postbiotic, and probiotic all together. I've spent a lot of time experimenting with probiotics. I had like 
clinically medicated IBS and digestive issues for the longest time. So I've like been in the probiotic world. That's so, let me show you how cute these guys are. Oh, hello. YouTuber, okay, dropped it, dropped it on the carpet. Prebiotics support the growth and activity of beneficial bacteria living in the gut. Probiotics are the live microorganisms that help relieve bloating, gas, mild and occasional diarrhea. And postbiotics provide fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and supports gut barrier function. It's a great trio, the holy trinity of gut care. With Ritual, it's a once daily capsule. Girl, I'll take it every day. It's very easy on your stomach. It has like this minty flavor to it. It's just like a sweet, I don't know. It doesn't taste like a horse pill. I really appreciate that it's a subscription that's delivered to your door monthly. You book it, you don't have to think about it, and it's just something that's gonna give you a little bit of boost in your, your nutritional intake. If you guys wanna check Ritual out, they have a promotion right now. You can check the link in the description of this video and use the code that I'm putting here. I don't think I know what it is right now, so I'm gonna mouth some words. I'm gonna guess. Maybe it's Caroline 20, Caroline 30, Caroline W30, Caroline W20. Don't know, it's gonna be one of those. I'll put the correct one here. To get a discount of this much <laughs> off your first month using Ritual, just use the link and code listed in the description and you're off to a great start. Thanks to them for making this whole YouTube channel possible. Love ya, love ya Ritual, you're the best. Back to the video. Okay, real quickly, I am going to demystify what's probably causing you the most pain in your breakup right now, or causing your friends the most pain in their breakup. Most likely, the thing that is causing you the deepest pain is the meaning that you're ascribing to this situation. A story that you're writing about what the breakup means about you, about your relationship, about the love they had for you, what your future holds. You're writing a story, you're writing a narrative, and you're writing a mean one for sure. Listen to me, the meaning is made up. The meaning is made up. We, we write stories of meaning to try to make sense of great pain. We ascribe the meaning to try and like comfort ourselves, but it actually ends up causing a lot of pain. And let me tell you a little personal story <laughs> I literally forgot this happened until I was writing notes for this video. I cannot believe this happened. So no one likes ghosting, right? Ghosting's pretty painful. I think I have a pretty good ghosting story. So I dated this guy. I dated this guy for two years. He was my boyfriend. We weren't just like hooking up. We weren't just saying, he was my boyfriend. He came on family vacations. We were looking at apartments together. We dated for two years and it ended with him ghosting me. I was ghosted by a boyfriend of two years. <laughs> I feel like I deserve a medal. How do you process that? It was such abject torture. I was very caught up in this idea with, well, what if he never really loved me? And while obsessed with that thought, I happened to come across this book. It was called, I think it's called Talking to Yourself. I'm gonna list a bunch of books and resources. And it talked about this concept of taking this what if, this what if concept that we're torturing ourselves with. What if he never really loved me? What if they're hooking up with someone? What if they'd already moved on? What, what if what? and flipping it to asking, so what? So in my situation, it was like, so what if a person who always treated me like trash, always made me feel like they didn't love me, always lied to me, certainly cheated on me, ended with ghosting on me, so what if that person is no longer in my life? So freaking what? I, for me, it's comforting to assume the worst because I'm like, if I can deal with the worst case scenario, I can deal with the rest as well. So I would, in my head, I'd be like, okay, let's assume he didn't love me. This person who didn't want to be with me couldn't even call me to tell me that our two-year relationship was over, always treated me terribly. And more importantly, as much as I wanted him, I always felt terrible in the relationship. So what if that thing is now not an option? Sounds like a pretty good deal. If you can identify your like, what if question, what if X, Y, Z is something that you're torturing yourself with, and then ask, so what? I bet there's an answer there that can ground you in what is true and separate you from all of the story that you're writing about some pretend greater truth. 
I've never seen a breakup go down like this. We're barefoot, we're cute, hands on knees. If anyone has had a breakup that looks like this image, they look like they're ready for their gap photo shoot. I don't think I've ever had a breakup that didn't look like like one person was like, if you saw them being arrested in that moment, you'd be like, yeah, that reflects their behavior. This couple should probably get back together. All right, we gotta talk about this contact. Should you contact them? Should you not? Especially today, almost everyone struggles with this. I feel like it's quite rare to have like a clean cut on a breakup because we're just inundated with each other's continued existence all the time. It's infuriating. Can't you just cease to exist for me, please? You know, I have to, I have to see your Instagram stories. I have to even go through the, the, the hassle of muting you. Like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna have to make the choice. You constantly have to choose. You have to keep choosing to not engage. It's not just one choice. Like, I feel like, like, back in, like, other eras, pre-texting and social media, you could just be like, I don't even know if they're still alive. And that was kind of beautiful. I did not struggle with reaching out to people, but when they reached out, it was really hard for me not to respond. I felt guilty. I felt rude if I didn't respond. I felt like they would attack me, and, you know, sometimes people do. So it's helpful to identify what you struggle with, because I still had a lot of ongoing contact with exes, even though I would never reach out to them, basically never. But it was really hard for me not to respond. And I think they kind of knew that. And the most important, I think is this concept. The pain, the pain of the breakup, the ripping apart that you're feeling, it's because when you've been in a relationship, you've taken all this time to sew yourselves together, right? You've learned to depend on each other. And when you're going through the breakup, you are ripping the seams apart one stitch at a time. And it is so painful. And every time you have contact, you sew another stitch back in. And it's just another stitch that you then have to rip back out. So just know that. If you're like me, like the contact will happen again. It will happen sometimes. But if you do have those moments of contact and you're tempted by it, know that you're sewing in stitches. Just know that you're gonna have to rip out again. That sets you back. That does set you back. I don't care how pleasant the phone call feels. I don't care how much it feels like you're understanding each other and respecting each other and we were just friendly and it was respectful. Sorry to break it to you. They are gonna have to be ripped out. And there's this idea of like, oh no, we're just being friendly. We're just being respectful. I just want it to be a nice thing. That rarely works out. If that works at all, it usually works so long as we're both going through the healing process and the moving on process at the same rate. As soon as somebody else goes on a new date, as soon as somebody else has a new boyfriend or whatever, then this feeling of we're being friendly and taking care of each other is kind of demolished. And you realize it was a facade all along. Be respectful. But it doesn't mean you have to be in contact because that's really just another way of clinging to the relationship. It's like, now we're in the breakup together. Now we're in the healing together. It's just another way of clinging to attachment. If you do find you need to go the way of blocking, like I would ask people not to contact me, you know, they didn't always listen and it was hard. <coughs> Bless me. It was hard not to respond. So I would sometimes block people. It doesn't feel good. But if people aren't respecting your boundaries, then I gotta put up a firmer boundary. And what I would sometimes do is I would tell them I'm blocking them because I, I was very afraid of people lashing out and attacking me. I didn't want it to be a slight. I just wanted to free myself from the fear of my own phone. The, the constant like on edge, like, did they text me? Am I gonna wake up to a really mean text from them? Am I going to have to like decide whether I pick up this phone call? <sighs> Give yourself the peace of just knowing nothing's popping up on that phone. That's what blocking really did for me, for what it's worth. There are some major tools that helped me get through those drowning periods. Number one, use a calendar. Use a calendar. I would literally take out a calendar and plot out the different events. This was like week one of total drowning that lasted for 10 days or whatever. And then another of those periods would hit me like two weeks after that. And then another would hit two weeks after that. And I could predict, I'd be like, okay, something's coming for me in about one more week. I've got one more week till I hit a new level of processing this healing. So I'm prepared for it now. It's not catching me off guard. You can plot it out and you can also start to see how slowly the distance between them will elongate. You can also plot out 
your person, your ex person's plot point behaviors too. They have a cycle too. Maybe they're the person who always reaches out and makes contact and you find it really hard not to respond. The person who reaches out, they have a calendar. They, they don't know about it, but they have a cycle of the amount of weeks they can go before they have to reach out to you again. I started plotting it out on a calendar and it got to the point where after months of silence, months of not hearing some from them, I would be able to look at the calendar and be like, he's calling me that week. And I was right, I was always right. It was crazy, like there's a pattern. You don't wanna be so thrown off by them calling that you have no choice but to pick up the phone, right? You wanna have a little more of your bearings about you so that you can possibly be prepared, have a warning, and possibly choose not to pick up the phone because you know it's gonna be a cycle. Ooh, this is a nice one. This is a nice picture of a breakup. Here she has taken a photo of her and her stock image attractive husband, bro boyfriend, and broken the image perfectly in half like it's a cracker. That's breakups. Okay, moving on. Journaling. I'm a big fan of journaling, but it's not for everybody. So I've got some alternatives that really, these were the lifesavers. Number one, just recording a voice memo to yourself. This is nice because it's like journaling, but it's more stream of consciousness. You don't have to be a big writer. You don't have to wait for a friend to be available to pick up the phone and let you vent. And most importantly, it captures so much of your emotion in a difficult moment, much more than just like, reading an old journal does and you can play it back later and be like oh my god look at how i felt and you can see how different you feel it's very helpful and additionally micro journaling this is the biggest one that saved me by micro journaling i would open just a page in like my notes app on my phone and it's not a full journal entry it would literally be like you can rank a number how you're feeling one out of ten monday 10 a.m. feeling like a two out of 10. Cannot get out of bed, what's the point of living? Everything is a mistake. Monday evening, maybe a four out of 10. Tuesday, five out of 10. Thursday, zero out of 10. You know, it's not a direct increase, but it's two major benefits. It's gonna show you, first of all, how quickly things do change. In these moments where you're like, this feeling is forever, it's just not. Don't believe me when I say that. Look at your own micro journal and you can see by your own account that this negative feeling only ever lasts for like max eight hours. So when I hit that feeling again later, set a timer. Okay, I basically wanna end it all right now. I'm gonna set a timer for eight hours and see if it passes. Like it doesn't lessen the weight of those zero out of 10 moments, but it lessens the fear that this is forever because it's just not and you can tell from your own account. It's very nice to give structure to this unstructured time. And it also helps to highlight how gradually over time, your lowest low rises very slowly. And it's almost imperceptible if you're not taking note of it, but that can be a big thing to like give you confidence in yourself and your own healing. It changes over time. Some more literature and resources that really helped me personally if you're going through a toxic relationship toxic breakups there's a possibility that it's a codependent relationship that was certainly true for me i really recommend reading about codependency or just trying to figure out what your dynamic is there's this feeling that like no one's gone through what i've been through before girl there's books, there are books and books written on it. I went into Barnes and Noble, I remember, and I gathered every single book on codependency that I could find. And I like piled them up in a corner and sat there and just read. I had so many books with me, an employee came up and was like, ma'am, you're not allowed to sit with that many books at a time. Didn't know that was a rule. And I was like, well, sorry, I need these books and these books need me. No, I didn't say that, that's a little, codependency joke very niche very niche uh kind of humor but the employee did come up to me and, and tell me how to put some of the books away didn't appreciate the other thing that really helped to read about was grief the cycles of grief going through a breakup it is grief it is loss the cycles the steps and stages a lot of them were identical there is a path and you can start to anticipate the steps instead of being like blindsided by them all the time <laughs> I like this one where he's peeking out the window. <laughs> one guy's kind of down and the other guy's like, get me out of here. Yeah, true. I do feel like that's kind of the case. Like one person really wants to talk about it and the other person's like, I'm, I'm gonna jump out of this window.
on the topic of support, whether you're the person who needs support or you want to be there for somebody else you love who's going through this time, I would kind of avoid seeking support from the people who can only say negative things about your ex. And they're, they're probably in that place out of love. Like they're, they're, they feel maybe so relieved to see that you're no longer in a relationship that maybe wasn't right for you. However, if you're the person supporting or you're the person in the breakup, pay attention to this. Let's say it's your friend and all they can focus on is what sucked about your ex. It's very ineffective for your healing process. And it actually has the opposite effect. It can push you back to them because if all you're hearing is they were terrible like this and like this and like this, then that part of them is covered. And your brain will naturally then drift over to, okay, but what were all the good things about them? Cause no one's talking about that. So by being super negative, you are actually forcing them to focus more on what was positive about the relationship. And there's probably both there. It's never so black and white. It's like if you're mourning somebody and you were with them for a while, it wasn't for no reason. Even if they were abusive, it wasn't for no reason. None of us stay with abusive people because everything's terrible. There's something complicated there. There's something that we were tempted by, something good, something nuanced. Any, any of these breakups are complicated. I find that when I'm with someone who can only see the negative of a relationship and the more time I spend trying to explain to them what was actually good, the more time I spend defending it, the less time I'm spending reflecting on what was destructive and bad. It's just very tactically ineffective. <laughs> and the more that you're made to feel that people don't get the good things about your relationship, the more you're, you are gonna feel like your ex is the only person who gets you. Luckily, I also had friends who'd been through those kind of nuanced breakups and they could hold space for that and that was the most effective kind of support for me. Ideally, it's also really nice to find if you have a friend who's been through a breakup of a relationship that had a similar dynamic, whether it was like a toxic relationship, an abusive relationship, a super platonic amicable breakup, or a breakup where your co-parents, all these different dynamics of a relationship and of a breakup can color the experience and can be that thing that makes you feel like, no, but mine's different and no one understands. Try to find the person who has been through some color of that dynamic. I also, of course, saw a therapist. It's a great situation because they're literally paid to listen to you. Go on the internet. I spent a lot of time in Reddit forums. It's nice to just see that like the dynamic exists everywhere. Someone else out there has been through it. I found a lot of support just reading anonymous shit on the internet. I love the internet. You can Google anything is what I learned. You can Google anything including this picture stock image of a breakup. In these stock images of breakups where like women are crying, they're always very carefully like not touching their makeup, not touching their hair, like ruffling the hair, pinching the nose, don't mess the makeup. No, I look like a goblin. I look like a goblin. Mid breakup, my face has become a mask of smeared makeup and various liquids. I'm talking about tears. If you find yourself going through this incredibly dark, unknown, uncharted territory, know that there is an end. And the pain that you're feeling is progress. The pain is the character building and it is the healing. So be comforted that when you're in those moments of pain, you're doing the work. You're doing the work. But at least know that it's not for nothing and it's not getting you nowhere. You are moving as, as imperceptible and small as those moves may seem. You are getting somewhere and it is slowly changing. I promise you. It's March, it's breakup season. The amount of times I've been broken up with on Valentine's Day, woof. I think this is breakup season. I've never ended up with someone in, in the spring, I don't think. I'm like always single by the spring. Share this video if you know somebody who might benefit from some of the support. I also did a whole breakup episode on my podcast, Not For Everyone. I'll link that podcast episode. There's a future, there's a lesson, there's a day when you'll feel differently and that's pretty much comforting to nobody. It's pretty much comforting to nobody, I know that. But know that my heart goes out to you. I know that place very well. Find the people in your life who do also know that place. The terrible feelings are gonna come, but they certainly won't be forever. And I'm excited for who you're gonna be on the other side. Thanks for tuning in today. Be patient with yourself and do something nice for yourself today. It's gonna be okay.